Hearing this, Lu Sheng grew quite impatient. He had no idea who this woman was or why she lived here, but it was clear she was hiding something. Not wanting to waste too much time on her, Lu Sheng glared at her and told her that he had no interest in the house. All he wanted to know was where the man was. The woman, meeting Lu Sheng's gaze, involuntarily took a few steps back. Seconds later, she pointed in a direction and said the man now lived beside the dumpster. She even called him an old madman, mentioning that he went insane after his whole family died. In a soft voice, she added that she hadn't stolen his house because the man had lost his mind. Lu Sheng let out a sigh, then with a light nod, he thanked her, and then left. He didn't want to delve too deep into any dispute between them. His main goal for today was to find the man. As Lu Sheng walked away, the woman breathed a sigh of relief, puzzled why anyone would specifically look for the old madman but felt reassured that Lu Sheng seemed uninterested in the house. Lu Sheng circled the old building and eventually found the trash heap in a corner. An old man, dressed in ragged clothes, was rummaging through a garbage bin. Lu Sheng took out a photo of the victim's father, carefully comparing it before calling out the man's name. The man, whose shoes were worn out, his toes were sticking out of them, and his clothes were patched all over, paid no mind to the stench and flies surrounding the garbage bin, but squinted his eyes and looked towards the person when he heard his name. Lu Sheng took a few steps closer, examining him. Seeing Lu Sheng approach, the old man looked at him warily, asking who he was and why he was looking for him. Lu Sheng examined the photo in his hand, likely an old work ID of the man before the tragedy. He figured that the man should be in his late forties this year. However, now, looking at the man before him, with entirely gray hair and a face as dark and wrinkled as dried bark, Lu Sheng couldn't help but sigh, wondering what hardships the old man had endured during this time. Getting no response, the man asked again, this time raising his voice. His tone became more serious. Lu Sheng, however, remained silent. The man had previously worked as a manager in a factory, enjoying a happy family life with his wife and two daughters. One night, his younger daughter was abducted on her way home from a night class by people from the Ji Dao Martial School. Upon hearing the news, the elder daughter went to confront the culprits, however, she never returned. A week later, the bodies of both sisters were found on a riverbank outside of the city, having met with tragic ends. What they went through was unimaginable. Unable to bear the loss, the man's wife took her own life. The man sought help everywhere he could but to no avail. Finally, after kneeling for weeks at the entrance of the Seventh Divine Martial University, he sought out the Martial Saint and begged him to help him. The Martial Saint didn't agree on the spot nor declined. Seeing that Lu Sheng had not responded after his asking twice now, the man instinctively grabbed a garbage bag by his feet, thinking Lu Sheng was there to steal from him. Witnessing this, Lu Sheng felt a pang of sorrow in his heart. After a moment of thought, he finally spoke up, telling the man that he was a classmate of the man's younger daughter, and had come specifically to see him. Perhaps hearing his daughter's name sparked as something seemed to suddenly light up. He stepped forward excitedly, examining Lu Sheng, hardly daring to believe, and asked Lu Sheng if he really was his daughter's classmate. Lu Sheng nodded and told the man he was there to help him today. The old man's lips quivered for a moment, but suddenly, his demeanor became fierce. He looked at Lu Sheng angrily, loudly accusing him of lying. As it turned out, the man had searched for all of his daughter's classmates and friends himself. He was sure that Lu Sheng definitely wasn't one of them. The man was not insane as everyone claimed he was, his emotions running high, even going so far as to grab Lu Sheng by the collar, furiously accusing him of deceit. He wondered if Lu Sheng was here trying to take something from him just like everyone else. The man's breathing became rapid, his speech almost incoherent. He stared intently at Lu Sheng, raising his voice to say he remembered those people, every single one of them, but each one had claimed not to have seen his daughter. His eyes gradually reddened, veins bulging. With a bitter smile, he shook his head, knowing they were all lying. How could it be that none had seen her? They were simply afraid of telling the truth. His voice grew more suppressed towards the end, and he crouched down as if about to cry. Lu Sheng took a deep breath, patted the man's shoulder, apologized for claiming to be his daughter's classmate, and then crouched down beside him. However, he calmly and earnestly insisted that he indeed came to help. The man seemed confused, his gaze landing on Lu Sheng as if he had discovered something. He suddenly grabbed Lu Sheng's hand. He then excitedly asked if Lu Sheng was a powerful martial artist. Upon receiving a nod in affirmation, 
The man's demeanor transformed to one of joy, as if he had finally seen hope after years of waiting. The man had already met many martial artists and could almost recognize one at a glance. He then turned, squatting down to rummage through his burlap bag, pulling out various bottles and jars and some loose change, offering all his treasures to Lu Sheng if he could help him kill the Lian father and son. Lu Sheng looked at the items in the man's hand covered in flies, but didn't say anything. Seeing Lu Sheng's silence, the man grew anxious, and after several seconds, eventually, he discarded everything clattering to the ground. His body trembled with fear, worried that Lu Sheng might refuse due to the insufficient amount of money. He hurriedly promised that he could earn more, insisting that selling the scrap could still fetch some money. The man begged Lu Sheng for help. He had nothing left, even offering his own life if necessary. Lu Sheng observed the desperate man before him. At this very moment, there was no expression on Lu Sheng's face, and no one knew what he was thinking at that moment. However, the old man suddenly fell silent. He squatted on the ground, head bowed from his tone. It seemed to be filled with self-mockery and despair. As he looked at the bottles and jars, some shattered, tears welled up in his eyes. He didn't think Lu Sheng would help him anymore and started to mutter to himself, questioning whether Lu Sheng had come just to mock him, or perhaps the Ji Dao Martial Arts School had sent him to check if he was dead yet. The old man then burst into laughter, yet tears continued to stream down his face. He gritted his teeth with hatred, vowing to keep living no matter what, to survive until he saw the demise of those responsible for his family's tragedy. His eyes, bloodshot, stared fiercely at Lu Sheng. His words were venomous, yet determined to live until he could witness their tragic death, to see them descend and rot in hell. Lu Sheng squatted down, picking up a photo that had become yellow and faded and lay among the debris. It was a family portrait of the man, a moment captured years ago when they were still a warm and intact family. Perhaps no one would have thought the tragedy would happen to them. Holding the photo, Lu Sheng told the man he would borrow it for a while and calmly assured him, You will see it happen, I promise you. The old man paused as if he hadn't heard clearly. By the time he looked up again, Lu Sheng was already walking away. The old man's gaze followed him in confusion, his dry lips repeatedly murmuring, Thank you, thank you. Tears flowed as he thought. Even if Lu Sheng was lying to him, he was grateful. Lu Sheng exhaled slowly, feeling slightly relieved. He had thought his mental fortitude was strong, as he only wanted to focus solely on his own family, martial arts, and preventing the catastrophe 10,000 years from now. Taking on this task was simply an act of convenience. After all, with so much darkness and tragedy in the world, he couldn't possibly help everyone. Yet, something about this man's plight struck a particularly something within him. Suddenly, a voice came from behind. It was a chubby man in shorts and a tank top, smoking a cigarette. Taking a deep drag, he exhaled before speaking to Lu Sheng, telling him that it's been a long time since anyone came looking for the old man. Curious, Lu Sheng asked if it used to happen more often. The chubby man replied with a bitter smile, saying it was frequent, but mostly by those looking to swindle the man's money. In the years following his family's demise, the man, driven mad by grief, sought help for revenge from anyone who was a martial artist, offering his life savings and everything else he had in return. However, Everyone knew the culprit behind his family's tragedy was the Ji Dao Martial School. Eventually, the man was cheated out of everything, including his sanity and even his home. The chubby man approached Lu Sheng for a chat, noting that Lu Sheng hadn't taken the man's money, which he found commendable, otherwise he wouldn't waste a single second talking to him. After another puff of his cigarette, he curiously asked what Lu Sheng was there for. Lu Sheng smiled and simply replied that he would go, find them and then kill these bastards. The chubby man was stunned, only until the ash from his cigarette fell onto his thigh, snapping him back to reality. Meanwhile, at the Seventh Divine Marshall University, a cloaked person sat in the Zhao's office, sipping on his beverage. While blowing on the steam, the person mentioned that Lu Sheng hadn't gone to Ming City. Zhao nodded, aware that Lu Sheng returned yesterday, and had taken on two new missions. The cloaked person, with a smirk, pointed out that Lian Ye currently resides in Ming City. Though Lu Sheng could have gone there first, he seemed to deliberately take a longer route. To him, this clearly indicated Lu Sheng's intention to avoid Lian Ye, and seemed to have given up on the second option offered by the Martial Saint. However, the person claimed this was the actual test from the Martial Saint himself. 
After a pause and another sip of the beverage, he remarked, It's natural to seek fortune and avoid disaster. Zhao remained expressionless, setting down his drink, believing it too early to draw conclusions, since there was still time before the competition. The cloaked person finished his drink in one gulp, while noting, There's not much time left. After all, the martial saint isn't known for giving second chances. Zhao didn't respond this time, his gaze fixed outside the window, deep in thought, hoping Lu Sheng wouldn't disappoint the martial saint. Back to the Seventh Divine Martial University, which had gradually calmed down, was once again stirred with waves of excitement today. Upon hearing the announcement, many students made their way to the center of the campus. There, they witnessed the latest news on the screens. A tall figure, clad in a tank top, while carrying a metallic sword on his back, was seen slowly making his way into the campus. This was Xiao Lan, previously ranked second on the senior students list. He had accepted a double-A mission and had returned much sooner than expected. Even through the screen, some of the students could sense his intense aura. Many freshmen started discussing among themselves, as double-A missions were known for their difficulty. Standing at the back of the crowd was Chen Yixuan. Watching the man whom he had once defeated on the screen, Chen contemplated whether Xiao Lan's strength had surpassed his own. Not long after, a girl with two ponytails approached him, and while smiling tells him that Xiao Lan was likely back for the National College Martial Art Competition. Such a grand event happens only once every two years. He undoubtedly didn't want to miss out. However, Chen let out a sigh, thinking to himself that with Lu Sheng being part of the competition, end of the day, everyone was going to get their cheeks clapped. Not just them, but everyone who came and participated, including those so-called prodigies. Yet this wasn't necessarily a bad thing. With Lu Sheng on their side, he should be able to bring home a championship for their university. The girl shook her head, seemingly to have some prior knowledge that Chen wasn't aware of. She then tells him that Lu Sheng would not be participating. Hearing this, Chen turned around, looking quite puzzled. He wondered why a prodigy like Lu Sheng would choose to sit out. As it turned out, the girl had learned from her father who works in the university that there were two tests assigned to Lu Sheng by the martial saint, and he had to choose one to complete, however. The real test set out by the martial saint himself for Lu Sheng was to not attend the martial arts competition, but to undertake an SSS-ranked secret mission. She appeared to be privy to much insider information, which greatly annoyed Chen Yixuan, who couldn't help but criticize the school's leadership for seemingly suppressing Lu Sheng's potential. The girl shushed him and gestured for him to lower his voice, suggesting that the intentions of the martial saint were beyond their understanding. Chen Yixuan let out a sigh, his face a mixture of regret and anger, even striking the wall beside him in frustration. He reminisced about the martial arts competition two years prior, where the Ji Dao Martial School had two prodigies named the Twin Stars, swept through all of the seven divine martial universities, leaving them embarrassed to the ground. There were also rumors of another prodigy this year, seemingly more powerful than the Twin Stars. Initially, Chen had hoped that Lu Sheng would be their ticket to redemption, yet, just before his graduation, it seemed they were poised for another defeat. The girl gently held Chen's cheek, soothing him with soft words, telling him not to worry. Chen blushed at the gesture, only to hear her jokingly add that being defeated multiple times would eventually become more tolerable. She is basically saying just get used to it. However, her words were like a punch to the gut, hitting a sore spot for Chen. Meanwhile, Lu Sheng, upon his return to campus, took on two new missions but chose to stay in his dormitory instead of immediately embarking on them. Suddenly, he felt his phone vibrate. It was an email from the school, notifying participants to gather at the school entrance at 8 a.m. in three days to attend the competition. The email warned that failing to show up on time would be considered a forfeiture of his right to participate. For some reason, he suspected this final reminder was specifically intended for him. Anyway, he had noticed several sneaky figures lingering around him since his return to the campus, likely sent by the school to monitor whether he would leave his dormitory. There were also people in a distant building watching him constantly. Lu Sheng let out a cold smirk. Looks like that everyone seemed to prefer he not participate in the martial arts competition. However y'all know our boy, he ain't the person that is easily swayed by others' desires. Gazing at the Divine Martial Tower, he knew for a fact that neither the Seventh Divine Martial University nor the Martial Saints himself could sway his decision. For the next three days, he remained in his dormitory, 
The third day quickly arrived, and as the competition commenced, several buses were parked at the entrance of the university, surrounded by many students. The top ten from the senior student rankings had already arrived, and numerous freshmen were there to cheer them on. The vice principal, Zhao, was leading the team himself. However, he seemed to be looking for someone, his gaze wandering through the crowd as if searching. Despite this, the students behind him were abuzz with excitement, believing that with the Demon King joining the fray, their university was poised to redeem its past humiliations. Yet as time passed without any sign of Lu Sheng, Chen stood amongst the crowd, a wry smile on his face. Clearly these people were unaware that Lu Sheng had no intention of attending. To him, becoming the disciple of the martial saint was far more significant than participating in a competition. Zhao continuously glanced at his watch, a sigh escaping his lips as the departure time neared, unsure if he was disappointed in Lu Sheng not attending, or perhaps relieved that Lu Sheng made a better decision. Suddenly, his expression shifted, sensing a powerful aura approaching rapidly. Looking up, he saw a figure descending from the sky, causing a stir of excitement and cheers among the crowd. Everyone excitedly shouted Lu Sheng's name, although Zhao's expression was complicated. With one hand in his pocket, Lu Sheng calmly approached, apologizing to Zhao for being late to the party. Zhao took a deep breath, whispering to Lu Sheng that it was still not too late. The competition hadn't begun yet, and he could still opt out. Lu Sheng serenely replied, reminding Zhao of his own words, telling Lu Sheng it's important to follow his own will. Zhao opened his lips as if to say more, but ultimately took a deep breath and signaled everyone to board the bus. The students of the university erupted into cheers, fervently supporting the team that would represent their institution. After hours of travel on the bus, everyone was provided with university uniforms, which Lu Sheng also changed into. As the team leader, the vice principal waited until everyone was dressed before he began to explain the details of the competition. Meanwhile, Lu Sheng, gazing out the window, paid little attention, his thoughts focused on his own matters. He pondered the realm of a grandmaster, where one's blood energy level is as fervent as a furnace and the form one's first martial will while also creating a grandmaster's force field. Then what about the eighth level great grandmaster? From his experiences in the dream realm, he knew that at the eighth level, one's blood energy becomes exceptionally powerful, easily exceeding a hundred thousand. So powerful as it will flow like rivers, burning as magma, capable of melting steel, with combat power exceeding tens of millions. To reach this point, one's blood energy must transition from a liquid to a solid state. Oof, just from the sound of it, it's kind of scary. Anyways, he was only a step away from achieving this, ready to break through any moment. As a result, this will continuously refine the body of the martial artist. The longer one remains in the great grandmaster realm, the stronger one's physique becomes. This is another advantage of entering the great grandmaster realm. As it turned out, blood energy does not weaken as rapidly, allowing a martial artist to maintain their peak condition for an extended period. Not only that, this also provides them with the opportunity to step into the ninth level martial saint realm in their lifetime. Lu Sheng felt the changes within his body wondering when he would achieve this state. But one thing he knew, if given the chance, he was determined to experience it firsthand. Lu Sheng closed his eyes and decided to rest for a bit. After some time, they finally arrived at their destination. Stepping off the bus, Lu Sheng observed the scene before them. They had arrived at the foot of a mountain, besides the Seventh Divine Martial University, many other students, including the students from the other six Divine Martial Universities. Ordinary students could likely only watch the live broadcast from the foot of the mountain, while only the strong could ascend to the summit. The vice principal gathered everyone, preparing to climb the mountain, but Lu Sheng had already dashed ahead, fully aware that he was not yet capable of confronting a martial saint directly just yet, however. He aimed to prepare in advance. As long as the martial saint did not intervene personally, he believed that even the great grandmasters posed no real threat to him. Only through these combats, he would grow stronger, and one day, he was determined to kick the heads of the martial saints like he was kicking a soccer ball. Why is everyone telling him that the Triple S mission was the right choice, and why does the martial saint not want him to participate in the competition? Perhaps there's ulterior motives? Or maybe the martial saint truly thought winning the competition was too difficult for him. What do you think?